The king therefore decided to consult a hermit who is widely renowned for his wisdom. The hermit lived in a mountain where he allowed none except the common folks. Thus, the king dismounted his horse, left his bodyguards under the feet of the mountain, and went all alone to meet the hermit. The king found that hermit was digging a garden in front of his house. When he saw the king, the hermit greeted the king and immediately returned to his digging. And, and then, the ki uh, then the king decided to ask those questions. The king asked that, Mr. Wise man, I came here to get the answers for my three questions. But the hermit did not, does not, did not give any answers and immediately returned to the king. Hermit was weak and frail and was breathing heavily when, as soon as he struck his spade into the ground and uh, removed a little soil from the ground. Now, the king said, You are tired, wise man. Give me the spade. Let me work for a while. Then the hermit said, Thanks. He gave him the spade and sat on the ground. After digging two birds, the king again asked the questions. The hermit again did not answer. And instead, he rose up and said, Now, rest a while. Let me work a bit. The king did not give the spade back and went on digging. An hour passed and then another. And sun began to set behind the mountain. The sun begin to set behind the mountain. And then finally the king, at last, the king struck his spade into the ground and said, Mr. Wise Man, if you do not want to answer my questions, please tell so. I will return home. <coughs> the, the hermit said, Hey, see, someone is running towards us. Let us see who it is. The king looked around and found a bearded man running out of the woods. The man held his hands pressed to his stomach. And as soon as he reached the king, he started fainting. The king and the hermit unclothed the man. There was a severe wound in his stomach. The king thrust the wound as best as he could with his handkerchief and the towel from the hermit. But the flow of blood did not abate. Again and again, the king removed the bandage soaked in the warm blood, washed and rebandaged the wound. When finally the blood ceased flowing out, the man revived and asked for a drink. The king brought fresh water and gave it to him. The king, along with the hermit, carried the man into the hut and made him lay on the bed. Having worked all day long, the king was so tired and he went to sleep and obviously. The next day, when the king wake up, he does not recognize for a while where he was. Such a sound sleep he had. And then he saw the bearded man. The bearded man, looking at the king, said, Your Majesty, please forgive me. Then the king said, I do not know you. I have nothing to forgive you for. Then the bearded man said, You don't know me, but I know you. I am your enemy, host brother, you have killed and seized my property. I resolved to kill you on your way back. But I was waiting all day along, but you did not turn up. Your man recognized me, attacked and wounded. But somehow I managed to escape from them. If you, don't, if you don't have attended to my wound, I would have bled to death 
bled to death by this time. Now, therefore, if I live and if you wish it, I will remain as a faithful slave. And also bid my sons to do the same. For you mean your majesty. Then the king was so glad. He made peace so easily with an enemy. He not only forgave him, but also promised to restore his property and also sent his own physicians and this person to attend to the man. Then, after leaving the man in the hut, the king came outside the hut and saw the hermit on his knees sowing the seeds into the beds they dug the day before. The king said, for the last time, wise man, I pray you to answer my question. The hermit said, you have already been answered. The king, answer. Answer? How answer? What do you mean? Then the hermit said, had you not shown pityness on my weakness yesterday and did not eat those birds, instead of returning home, you would have been attacked by that fellow. Hence, the most important time was when we were digging the bags. I was the most important man, and the most important deed was to give me the boat. Afterwards, when that man ran came towards us, the most important time was when you are attending to him. Uh, otherwise, we would have died without making peace with him. That guy would have died without making peace with him. Hence, he was the most important man, and doing him was the most important deed. Remember then, there is only one important time, that is now. <coughs> and it is important because it is, it is the only time when we have full control over ourselves. And the most important man was, what most important man is he with whom you are. For anyone cannot tell whether or not ever they will deal with any other man. And the most important pursuit was to do him good. Since it is for that purpose alone, the man was sent into this very life. Thank you. Thank you.